Welcome to Justin Dwyer Artistry. It's the third Friday of the month, and that means it's Art Addicts Alliance time. This month I'm going to share with you a painting in honour of the reawakening of the earth, because spring is coming. Don't forget the other members of the Art Addicts Alliance are linked in the description box below. Check out their work. They consist of Jazz Capri, Weblight Dreams, Jenna Gets Creative, Pan Dimensional Space Zombie, All Funnies and Games, Aurora's Art World, Blue Flynn, The Artsy Pineapple, Enjoy Drawing with Mary, Dark Star Creations and Lilo Me, Justin DeWire Artistry. You'll also find a link there to the Discord server if you want to get involved. Check it out. As I've already mentioned, today's painting is all about spring. Spring is one of the four seasons that we experience throughout the year. I could be really boring and tell you that the seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth's rotational axis. The Earth has a tilt of 23.5 degrees relative to the plane of rotation around the Sun. And this tilt means that the different hemispheres get more direct light and warmth from the Sun depending on where the Earth is situated in the year-long orbit. But I won't tell you about that because that'll put you to sleep. What I'm going to share with you is my own personal experience of spring, my inner reactions and how it makes me feel. How excited was the gardener about spring? He was so excited he wet his plants. Now I'm pretty excited about spring as well, so join me on this journey and let's get cracking. I've started this painting the way I start most of my oil paintings. I've applied a very thin layer of paint wet down with turpentine to cover the whole canvas and to map out all the areas of colours that I want to use. This painting is being made from a reference photo that I took on my way to work early one spring morning. There was a little bit of mist in the air and the sun had just come up and there was a beautiful light reflecting on the trees and the atmosphere and through the mist. I couldn't help myself but pull up and take a quick photo in the hope that I would be able to make a painting at some point. And here it is. I did this painting a little while ago because I live in Australia and our spring comes in September. But I painted it in the spring and I finished it in the early summer. I built the painting up in many layers across multiple days and it took me around 12 hours to paint this painting. I've reduced that time down to 12 minutes just for your viewing pleasure. Over the basic colours of the background I'm painting in the tree. I want the tree to be the star of this painting. I want it to have a lot of energy and life of its own. So it needs to come forwards and it needs to really have strong contrast against the background. What kind of garden does a baker have? A flower garden. The great garden of nature has a great deal of beauty in it all year round. But my favourite time of the year is always springtime, as I see the plants re-emerge from their winter slumber and we get to view the whole world bursting with a new energy. What did the tree say at the beginning of spring? What a relief! In my reference photo, the tree is just starting to get its leaves back. There's lots of tiny little dots of very dark green colour is what I can see. My photo is a bit gloomy, but I want my painting to be a bit lighter and brighter. I'm not trying to paint in every leaf on the tree. I'm just using lots of small dashes to create the shapes of the leaf clusters. I use the tip of the brush quite lightly with very thin paint and I just twist the brush frequently to get all of the sides applied. There is a mad energy about spring a crazy amount of growth and vigorous activity amongst the natural world. The plants and the animals know that they need to get on with the job and get everything done that they possibly can through spring and summer before the weather turns cold again. It's an amazing time to go outside and experience nature. What does spring mean to you? I'd love to hear what you think. Leave me a comment below and tell me your thoughts. Maybe spring isn't your favorite season. Maybe you have another season. Tell me all about it. I really want to know what you think. And while you're at it, don't forget, the like button is free to use. Feel free to hit it. And while I'm shamelessly self-promoting, don't forget that the links in the description box below will also take you to my other work on my social media and my website. Check them out. They're also free.
A tree is a complex thing. There are many branches sticking out in many directions and to achieve a good three-dimensional effect, we need to use some contrast variation. I've lost my variation here, but I'll get it back. While I was painting this picture, I was experiencing a conflict. A conflict between following the reference clearly and creating a realistic picture and between letting myself go and creating a more expressive picture which did not necessarily reflect the actual situation but which reflected the feelings and the emotions that I was experiencing. This type of conflict can be common in my artwork. Have you ever experienced something like this? Leave me a comment below and tell me what your experiences have been. To increase the energy of a painting, I need to add conflict within that painting. I need to add energetic lines. I need to add contrast. I need to add vigorous motion. But those things aren't present in my reference photograph, so I need to find them within myself and put them into the painting. A photograph is a flat two-dimensional thing that does not represent reality. It's simply a series of light being captured in certain shapes and certain patterns. Stand outside and take a look at something. Then take a photo of it with your phone. Have a look at the photo and compare it to what you really see. You'll soon see there's a tremendous difference in depth and detail that your eyes can pick up that your camera just can't. But this is where you have the power to create your own destiny. You have the ability to recreate your own inner vision of what the world looks like and how you experience it. And that is the beautiful thing about art. And that is why every artist's story is valuable and should be shared. Nobody else sees the world quite like you do. Don't be afraid to open up and let us see your beautiful vision, whatever that might be. But before I start ranting, let's go back to the painting. I've painted in some detail in the foreground, in some grass clumps and a fence, and some fence wires along the front. This little bit of detail will add a little bit more depth in my painting and give a bit more visual interest for the viewer when they come to view it later. The details of these items aren't important because I'm not trying to recreate a well-known scene. This is simply a spot along the road where I've pulled up in my car of a morning and taken a quick photo. Nobody but me will ever know exactly where this spot is, so I don't need to draw in every blade of grass or every particular detail to recreate a popular scene. I'm looking for some warmer tones in the tree now I feel like everything is a little bit too cool and a little bit pushed back too much. I want to be able to bring it forward with some warm light colours. These were certainly not present in the morning, as basically all I captured in my photo was a silhouette. But I'm really looking to bring this forward and bring it alive. Even in the fence posts, I'm adding in some warm colours to bring them forward and heat the scene up and bring the energy of spring with it. I'm adding some warm reds and oranges to the trunk of the tree. I really want to bring these forward. In the cool morning light, all I could really see on that day was greys, but grey isn't exciting. I want to put the reds and the browns in here and bring everything forward and warm it up. I've added more foliage to the tree than it really had on the day, but I want it to be an exhibition of the kind of energy that I was feeling and the kind of feelings that spring gives to me. So I'm adding more and more leaves and more and more vigorous lines that are bursting out in every direction to give this painting the energy and the excitement that I want it to create. Orange is a strong colour and a little bit of it will go a long way, but it will complement very nicely against the blue of the sky in the background and it will also work quite well with the warm glow of the lower part of the sky. Blue and orange are probably my favourite colour combination. Which colour combinations do you like? These oranges will create the impression of sun rays reflecting off the leaves of the tree. How did the sun listen to its favourite song? On the radio, of course. Radio? Hmm, yes. I've warmed the tree up, but now it's lost some of its contrast, and it's looking a little bit weak and straggly, so I'm going to build in some of the dark areas again, and increase the contrast which will bring it forward and help to add to the three-dimensional shape. 
even though I'm painting more expressively and less realistically, I still want there to be some sense of space and volume in the work that I'm creating. I put away the little brush and I pull out the fan brush with a nice stiff bristle. This is going to be perfect to add volume to the foliage of this tree. I feel like I need to put more leaves in to really create that feeling of bursting energy coming out of this thing. I'm mixing the brightest greens yet with a lot of yellow in there and that's really going to come forward in the painting. Then I'm building in a few sections with a little bit more blue, brown and white to push some areas back and add that little bit of three dimensionality to the leaves of the tree. I've gotten so carried away with foliage that I've lost the top of my tree out of the top of the painting. I want the tree to be contained within. That way it doesn't have any awkward cropping and it will look better. I'm easily able to take a layer of paint off with turps and a rag, but the underpainting is still present. This also gives me an opportunity to add a little bit more contrast to the very top of the sky, which will give us that little bit more depth in the background. Now it's just time for me to reshape my tree and to be able to put in a few finishing touches on this painting. What is Irish and comes out in springtime? Patio furniture. Okay, that was a sick joke, but my tree is not sick. It's very healthy, alive, and energetic. I'm adding in some highlights. I'm just really trying to force as much energy as I can with all of these movements and patterns. When is the best time to buy a trampoline? In springtime, of course. And I hope that you'll spring into action and hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And we add the last few touches, and then finally I'm done. There's the finished painting. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I really enjoyed your company. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and bye-bye. Okay, since you made it this far, here's a bonus joke. What do you call when the worms take over the world? Global worming. <laughs>